Hey everyone, this is Tara McCollum and I'm with Energetic Expressions and today, my very first interview, I have <laughs> Rivas Berdejo with me and um, I wanted to go over, first of all, so hey, how are you? Hi, I'm really good. <laughs> um, why I wanted to do these and you are the one who inspired me, to be honest, because I think a lot of people go out and talk about topics and there's something to the being who we are mm. that gosh it's like Dane's book being you changes the world <laughs> and so I wanted to start having conversations with people about their creations but also really acknowledging who you be in the world and how that is a change how you're seeing mm. your world change for you and um, just really acknowledging anyone who's already come into my world and facilitated change in it just by being yourself. Mm. Um, so that's the inspiration because like how much like more fun could we have in celebrating who somebody is just naturally. And yeah, I love that. I mean, that's one of the things that I love by being around you is that you're constantly acknowledging um, the, sh the changes that are going on in your life, you know, my capacities pointing out sometimes the capacities that I'm not even aware of and being in gratitude for that, which opens up this space for me to be in gratitude for it in a different way. Um, so thank you. Yeah, I'm excited to see what shows up with your doing these series of interviews. <laughs> I know, me too. <laughs> kind of selfish. Like, how fun is it to, like, interview really potent, awesome, fun people? So. <laughs> How cool is that? So will you tell us a little bit about your business and what the name of it is? And what is it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, my business is Empowering Light Language, Inc. Uh, that's the professional business. Uh, but I also have, you know, just the business of living and that I'm always thinking about and asking questions around. And just my professional business is just one aspect of that. Uh, Empowering Light Language, Inc. Um, provides different services, including speech language therapy, feeding therapy, learning behavioral um, services, and it uses energetic modalities like Reiki and access consciousness tools. And then I do consultations. I facilitate workshops and webinars on all the different areas of childhood pediatric development. And then I also work with a lot of parents, professionals, and individuals to create more ease, joy, and glory in their lives, more abundance, and increasing their awareness just so that they can have a lot more fun and adventure. Because um, that's, that's really part of what I really enjoy about my life and my business is that I get to be honored with witnessing people who are tapping into and aware of their capacities in a way that they never had before, be it a child who is all of a sudden saying a word that everyone in their world never thought that they'd be able to say, or a parent changing their dynamic with, um, with their child, themselves, their family about what it means to be a parent and what it means to be a man or a woman and letting go of all these different points of views that they thought that was have tos and you know, that they needed this certain things and it's not necessarily the case. Um, there have been people who have never done energy work before and then they come to one of my classes and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm picking up on the energy. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that like, this is possible. And you just see their world open up and it's like, well, if I didn't know this was possible, and I'm sensing this and I'm aware of this now, like what else is possible? And, mm -hmm. and being in, the, in that space and be, getting to see those moments of like those aha, as, as I think Oprah would say, those aha moments yeah. <laughs> um, is really, really fun. And then there's usually a lot of laughter and a lot of joy in it. Like that's part of why I love being around you, Tara, because we're always laughing so much. And so I'm gravitating toward those people and those moments and those places that bring that joy to my life. And uh, that's been the joy of my, the business of my living now um, is really seeking that out and, and asking what other ways I could have fun like that. Awesome. You, you went over a couple different things that I wanna 
like explore a little bit more, definitely choice. Mm. It looks like you're choosing a lot more for your life that realizing that there aren't have tos, Mm -hmm. first of all. And so giving yourself permission not to fall into that like groove and, and looking around at the different possibilities. Um, When did you start that journey? And like, what was before that <laughs> mm. and what has changed in your life because you decided to have that choice? Yeah, it seems like multiple lifetimes ago now. Um, <laughs> uh, when did it start? I mean, um, it, it was kind of, it's one of those things that is tricky to pinpoint. What I was only yesterday when we were having a conversation about some of my capacities and some of the things that work with our dynamic, I realized when one of the bigger, more clear shifts happened. And it was when I was asking questions around my relationship with my body. Um, I was chronically sick with sinus infections and bronchitis and uh, undiagnosed allergies. My immune system was underground. Um, I was in chronic pain. I'd had multiple car accidents at my knee pain, back pain, hand pain that would just bring me to my knees. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, um, it was just, you know, everywhere. It, it was just all this stuff going on and the doctors didn't know what to do with me, didn't know what to do with my body. All the things that was working for other people's bodies wasn't working for me. And I had to ask questions about, well, what else could I do and who else could I tap into and, in, and see because I really didn't want that life. I knew that even though they were saying, hey, just keep taking these meds, even though it's just a Band-Aid and I'm still miserable, you know, more times than not with my body, like I knew that there was something else possible and I, that wasn't enough for me. Mm-hmm. And so as soon as I found some other um, people to reach out to and I started seeing a naturopathic doctor um, and it started and became aware of energy work and started taking Reiki classes and learning about that, it completely changed my world. And so as soon as I cut, started seeing what was shifting with my body, I was more willing to ask questions about other areas of my life as well, including the interpersonal, like all of a sudden the people that weren't so nurturing to me and my body and they didn't have my back in my life, be it friendships, family relationships, um, you know, coworkers, things like that. I was like, yeah, this, I know that there's something better out there for me. So I can't have you in my life right now. And this in the way that I have been having you in my life. So I really changed how I was interacting with the people around me because I was getting my, a different relationship with my body back. And it wasn't this like love, hate. It wasn't this, oh, my body's miserable. So I'm going to be miserable. This like pull and tug thing. It was very much like, oh, okay, you're shifting. Oh, there's a lot more ease. Oh, I can do all these different things that I want to do now without having to bring all of my Kleenex and hand sanitizer and all this, my, you know, satchel O accoutrements, you know, like now it was just like, oh, I could just go. (laughs) Go. And um, as soon as that started shifting, I just asked more and more questions and added on more and more and more to my life. And I was willing to choose something different because that those earlier choosing something different had created so much more mm-hmm. that I, that now I'm, I'm, I'm like, Oh, what else could I choose? And what else can I choose? And what else could I have? And what else could I create? Cause I, I completely transformed my body. And any better than that. <laughs> I, I, when I think about the insomnia I used to have and the anxiety and depression and the, and the pain and all the sickness, I mean, just like months of just, ugh, you know, mm-hmm. I, I just, I don't even, I, don't, I barely recognize the person at life. It just seems like this really, like when I say multiple lifetimes ago, like it's not really an exaggeration because it's so far away from where I'm at right now and where I'm going that yeah. it just, it blows my mind, but it's really, really awesome. I'm super grateful for it. And it looked like, Going back into that moment, um, what I perceived was also there was a moment where you just, you chose you as the Mm -hmm. authority rather than giving your authority and like wisdom away to doctors or parents or friends or teachers, you said, okay, this isn't working for me. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, they might have titles, 
and like it might be in this reality that they're supposed to know but what's happening here they're not it's not helping me it's not creating ease and so mm -hmm. i'm going to now be my own authority and start making my own choices and mm -hmm. i see that you've like continued to like honor yourself as this knowing being mm -hmm. and do that like lights me up just <laughs> like even talking about it because like going from that space you choose tools that are around you um, and you choose like fun and you choose friends from that place of like, what does, what, like, what you perceive as good, what feels good, what's fun in your life. And mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. And what's going to be a contribution. So it's the, it's knowing when something's not working and when someone doesn't really get what's going on with you and your body and your, and your world and just doesn't get it. And then also being willing to receive help being receiving information receiving of awareness of other people who really do get it who really could be a contribution and that's the other thing that's really shifted because i was not willing to receive in the way that i'm willing to receive before as well i wasn't willing to receive as much awareness from my body and really asking my body the way i ask now what would work for you i was i was letting the doctors tell me what would work for my body instead of asking my body and asking my own awareness what would work and what would change everything. Um, and so that's, that's a really big shift. And then also just not really, not having, how do you say, like, I'm willing for people to help me out more and do more for me and contribute to my life way more than I was before. I was trying to do it all. I was everyone's go-to person mm -hmm. and, um, and I used to complain like, oh, I'm doing all this stuff for other people. And when I, I need help, they weren't there. But I'm not sure if I would have been willing to receive that anyway. Like right. if I had this whole point of view that I needed to be that for everybody. And so I wasn't necessarily choosing people that would have had that reciprocity um, in my life. And, which, and by those choices, I was then, that's what was going to show up. I was choosing people that wouldn't be contributing to me or have my back. So then... Why would I be surprised when they didn't have my back? You know, like, ah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, without a doubt. And um, one of the things that you and I have talked about too is just the space that you be where you really are okay with judgment around you. Like you're, you are you. You walk up and you're like, boom, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> and um, being that space, I am, um, you know, I know you myself, but like you're that space with yourself of non-judgment, of, of like acknowledgement. How has that changed your world? And then how do you see it affect the people around you? Um, well, I choose it as often as possible, as often as required multiple times a day. And there's definitely moments where I still catch myself judging myself or checking in on things and doubting, but it's way less than before. Mm -hmm. And how does it get any better than that? Right. Um, and one of the ways that I, that I've realized my inclusiveness, because mm -hmm. I don't really compartmentalize my life. Like I, I'll have a, a birthday party or a dinner party and I'll have my coworkers there and my friends from high school and college and people I've met at meetups and hobbies and my energy work folk and family there and everyone's interacting and they don't, and, and they don't really know who's going to be there to show up and how they know me and how they're all connected. And they see that that's an invitation to kind of not be like segment yourself yeah, and separate different bits of you and show different bits of you to certain people. Um, I'm myself, like you said, everywhere that I'm at. And a lot of it, honestly, like I didn't even think about it. It's just less work for me. Like it's right. just, <laughs> It takes so much energy to be like, what did I tell this person that I didn't tell this person that I, you know, like keeping track of all those different mm -hmm. messages yeah, yeah. and masks and roles and all that. It's yeah. just like, secrets and i don't have any secrets like you if go ahead ask me something like all right yes what's going on um so 
you know, it's, it's been really interesting to, for people to be like, wait, your mom knows all about that, about that from you, you know, that's going on in your life. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, she asked me, I'm like, oh, no. I mean, I'm not going to tell her every detail of it, you know, that's not required or necessary, but like, if someone just asks me and I'm like, okay, yeah, what? I'm, I'm fine with it, depending on what it's going to create, I'll go ahead and mention it and let them know what's going on. Um, and that's, I've noticed how that shifted people and uh, they, they're kind of grateful for that example, that possibility, even if it's not necessarily a possibility with their family or with their co coworkers because of those people's points of views or their limitations, that doesn't mean that they couldn't choose to increase more of how they show up all everywhere that they are in whatever way that they would be fun for them. For me, it's a lot more fun and it has, it creates a lot more ease to just mm -hmm. do that all the time. Um, and then I can use the energy that I would use by what, if I were to segment my life on other things. <laughs> Absolutely. That. And it's interesting when you like, I was thinking it like the masks and even like the different hats that people put on mm -hmm. and to like my observation of that is like when you're taking on roles that are like have tos that the world says that you have to be, it is, it's like taking it from out here and like put, putting it on and, and then taking it off and putting it on. Mm -hmm. When you really come from a totally different space, you're coming from this space of like, this, it's like coming from here. And so mm -hmm. like all of it's me, <laughs> it's me. It's not and, and it's shifted even more. Um, I'm so grateful to Gary Douglas and, and Dr. Dane here for access consciousness tools. And I, I was using a lot of these tools and I was able to sell my condo way faster than I ever imagined it would sell. It sold in like a week mm -hmm. um, after I got it all set up and painted and ready to go and cleaned. And as soon as I let go of, oh, I am the owner of a condo, that role, all of these other things were like, oh, what else? could I change? What else would I choose if I didn't have all these certain roles? And so I got really excited about traveling for a month to two months. And then I talked to Gary Douglas on the Voice of America radio show. And he was like, yeah, no, go for six months. Just travel for six months. And immediately my world was just like, oh, that sounds like so much fun. And also like, whoa, like <laughs> there was a definite whoa. But as soon as I chose like, okay, what would it take to do that? And I started choosing and taking the steps to make that happen. And I've been traveling now for more than four months, letting go of a lot of those roles of being someone's daughter, being someone's partner, being the owner of a condo, being, uh, having this, you know, my, a pet owner, the owner of this pet, which actually he owns me, but that's a whole other thing. Um, and you know, the owning a car and all these different things. I, ha I have even less have tos now. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's people will, I'll be meeting people on, in my travels and they'll be like, oh, well, you have to do this. And you have to do that. And immediately I'm like, mm, I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> um, I'm not sure that's really my world anymore. And so one of the things I've been asking is I've been, uh, interacting more with family and friends and I'm back in the United States and, and, and still not where my closet is, which is Chicago, but traveling all over is what other have tos can I let go of? <laughs> Uh, which is a different, you know, different way of asking, you know, like what other points of views or limitations can I let go of? It's really that phrase of have tos, because there's a lot of stuff that people think that they have to do. And it's like, is that really true? Um, and so far, most of the time, it hasn't been true for me. And it, that's really been expanding my world. And me pointing that out to other people, like, oh, you just said have to, but is that really true for you? And then just letting that question be out there. Mm -hmm. has really I've seen that shift other people's worlds as well and they're like oh maybe that isn't a have to and then now what <laughs> right. it's funny because um, I, I totally love to declutter like my house like a purge is like super fun to me and when you said that about like seeing what other have to's you can release and let go of um, it's like a way of decluttering your body isn't it because it's like mm -hmm. those locked in and like you know, create like this lockdown and then there's not the space for expansion. Mm -hmm. um, but you and there's no out. choice. That's not, there's, where's the choice and have to. Right. No, you know? it's so not fun. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going over like some of the things that you do, like what are your favorite tools right now from anywhere that are fun for you? Um, 
saying hi to my body in the morning and being grateful to my body uh, in whatever way that is. So this morning it was, you know, saying hi and and just like rubbing my hands all over my body. But when I after I put on my clothes, I was just like, "Ooh, these clothes feel really good. Thank you, body, for helping me choose these clothes." You know, um, that's that's been really lovely because uh, I woke up tired this morning for a little bit and then it shifted. So I'm really grateful for that. And and my body helped me shift that. Mm-hmm. Um, being out in nature more and more and really inserting that into my life and and recognizing that that has been a huge contribution to me and that, and it also helps me acknowledge and tap into my capacities with communicating with the earth that continue to expand and that I'm keep being surprised by. <laughs> so that's been really nice. Um, I really love traveling and, and asking where would be fun for me to go. Um, and what would it create if I choose this or go here? Uh, choose this as in like little things throughout the day and go here with the travel plans. That's been really great. Uh, I've been participating in this wonderful telecall um, on the money workbook. And one of the tools from that that I've been playing around with is saying in the morning and in the afternoon 10 times, I am money, I am power, I'm awareness, I'm creativity, and I'm control. Uh, those five things and saying those five 10 times in the morning, 10 times at night. Um, in addition to all life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory 10 times in the morning, 10 times at night. And I, I will take pauses from doing the, saying the mantra of access consciousness, which is all life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. And I did that for the, I remember for the first three to six months of being an access. And that also just created such a shift. And it's one of those simple ones that they tell you from the beginning any book you read of access consciousness and the first class, whatever, they show you this tool and it, it's so simple and yet it really just shifts so much. Like with the days that I don't necessarily start my day with saying it and I might say it in the middle of the day, mm-hmm. um, immediately I'm like, oh, oh that's so much better. Because <laughs> it reminds you that it's a choice when you choose dis-ease, when you choose things that aren't joyful, when you, when you choose the upset drama and trauma okay, that's a choice. And what is that creating? <laughs> right. And so it reminds you, oh, that's right. No, it's really supposed to be joyful. It's supposed to be happy. Um, and yeah, there will be challenges and there'll be things that are not so fun, but that doesn't mean you can't do them with ease. And so it's a lovely reminder for that. And that's, that's probably uh, the tools that I'm playing with the most. Um, and then lastly, continuing to practice and play with allowance. <laughs> <laughs> allowance is huge. <laughs> well, and when you're expanding at such a speed, it's understandable that like, there's a reminder to constantly come back to allowance because mm-hmm. the more that you're receiving, the more that you're creating, there's like all these new things that are entering your world that like Mm -hmm. you wouldn't allow in before in this like little space of control. Right. Right. And so like how much, (sighs) how cool is that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, allowance is the, anything that anyone says or does is just an interesting point of view. And, you know, here you are, if you're interacting with new people and new places all the time, um, you're hearing all of their stuff and you're also, reacting potentially and resisting some of their things and as soon as I get it I, I see myself doing that I'm like oh interesting point of view that I have that point of view that I'm reacting and resisting to that or that I'm aligning and agreeing with that um and, and when then someone brings up something be it in an you know in the news or on a movie or whatever in my head I'm thinking interesting point of view they have that point of view and it's it's it doesn't lock that all up in my world and I don't go into fighting it I don't get into the upset of it and it just it creates a lot more ease and and it's true as soon as as I expand and I, I'm getting more and more information and I'm getting more and more awareness even yesterday I had I had asked the question hey is my awareness exceeding my allowance right now because I was getting a little irritated <laughs> by some stuff and I was like oh okay in addition to getting my bars run what else could I do <laughs> 
I would really love to have my bars run right now. And it was asking for my allowance to match my awareness because my awareness had just increased a ton and it just, you have to keep then having that match up so you don't get that ouchiness happening in your world, which isn't fun for me because that's not my default. Who I truly be is happy and joyful. And so when I, that happens, I'm like, okay, right. I to <laughs> yeah, asking the questions. And mm. I, I want to circle back just for a second, all the way back to your body being in this like place of unease and all these things going, um, going on before. Mm. And, you know, like for me, I'm super grateful for that body that you had created because that body that you created that was like that was your invitation towards like realizing like you could change not just your body, but your entire life. Mm -hmm. And then to be this contribution in the world, to, to like go and go, okay, I have a lot of potency here. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of joy and, and I really be different than a lot of people and can be the invitation to this space. Mm -hmm. um, and so my gratitude is out there for you walking into that space and acknowledging, acknowledging yourself for the things that you changed um, I'm a little disappointed, Tara. I thought you were going to be saying that you're grateful for my body because it's like hot and sexy and it's really attractive <laughs> yeah. to you, but okay, fine. Like that too. Uh, <laughs> that too. I was like, oh, that's where she's going with it. Okay. I guess that that's, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, me too. I mean, like I, I'm grateful that all that happened and all the awareness that it created. And I'm also grateful that it's not significant to me anymore mm -hmm. that I can share that story. And it's not my story, like my life anymore. And it's not this like baggage I carry around with me. It's just like, Oh yeah, that happened. And now I'm somewhere else. But I do recognize that when I tell people that it does give them, it does let them know that it's possible for something that huge to change. And so if it's an invitation for people to know that that possibility is out there, like, yeah, awesome. Like, so grateful for that. Um, also, I mean, even just the people that you're around, I mean, now you have the world as your home. <laughs> you're <laughs> all over the place. And look at that, because every single place that you go, you're surrounded by people who want to play who are joyful who you know have questions for sure mm -hmm. um but are a contribution to you and so there's a lot of people out there that live a really different reality they're surrounded mm -hmm. by people who don't give to them that um uh are heavy and so i love mm -hmm. the fact that you talked about the fact you know you were in that space where you wanted to be um the one who is the giver and as much as we say, because I've been in that place too, we say that we want to receive. We really don't because it's like, oh, if I receive, then I'm in lack. And so mm -hmm. I don't, I don't need anything. I've got so much, like you come to me and um, it is coming from a totally different point of view. Uh, and so a little bit about that shift. Can you go into that shift that you've become with people and um, kind of the questions behind it? You went into it a little bit, but well, I mean, part of what you were just mentioning that it was that it's coming to mind is also when, when I was in that space of let me give, 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 let me taking care of everyone else. Let me have everyone's to do list in my to do list. I mean, I remember in college, I knew all of my friends class schedules. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so we'd be having lunch. and I'm like, aren't you supposed to be in like blah, blah, blah class right now? I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to go. Like they were like my children. Um, and, and it, it was a space of, oh, me, this is, makes me valuable. Um, and really not recognizing that just me being me is enough and that's valuable. But then also I was sending them the message that they weren't capable of managing all of that themselves, that they weren't capable of taking care of themselves. And as soon as someone pointed that out to me, like, oh, you're coming from this, this idea of helping comes from a space of superiority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then, and I, and I was like, oh, that's not the message I'm trying to send. That's not what I was trying to put out there. Oh, what, then what other, what other things can I be or do to send out the message that I would like to send? Here, one second. Mm 
How much fun can we have if she's the one? Do you guys want to dance? <laughs> awesome. So it's a, uh, that's, that's been a really wonderful shift to just know like, okay, what are, what is it actually creating? You might be thinking that you helping people, are you doing any certain thing or choosing any certain thing is going to, is creating a particular world mm -hmm. and really being in the question of what is it really creating? What message are you really sending out there? Um, and so I've, I've been changing my message. And so what's your message now? What do you think? Like, what <laughs> Oh, energetically dear. send to people um be you be happy okay. and what else is possible that you haven't considered yet yeah and that's it really well the short I, version <laughs> the short version i would also um have to say like you constantly uh acknowledge uh, the fact that people are, are already in almost to this space of you're like dude like you're already over flowing with that could you just acknowledge it and like ramp it up if you want to ramp it up but like <laughs> you're there you're there and so um it, to me you've gone from the space and and for myself too like this space of thinking that people are in lack to like got it like so you know share it acknowledge yourself you know have fun um but you're already being this potent being so how much more can you be that person yeah when like certain people ask for certain things like oh what would it take for me to oh that was an example that someone said recently like what would it take um for me to have an expansive business or something like that and i was like well have you acknowledged the places in which your business is already expansive Mm -hmm. and and then say and then how does it get any better than that because they and they're like oh wait no it's because it kind of implies that it already isn't expansive or what would it take to have you know a business that's changing the world is like so in what ways is your business already changing the world um what would it take for me to have friends that have my back all right who already has your back you know yeah. those kind of things and then go yes what would it take to have more of that with you and mm -hmm. things like that but you know sometimes I noticed that and even with myself and that's part of why I've been able to point it out to other people and, and hopefully you know create some awareness in their worlds with that is sometimes when we're asking for a certain thing we're not already in gratitude with what we already have and sometimes we are and great cool but if we're not let's acknowledge that and then ask for more or ask for it to show up in a way that we could greater than we could ever imagine or in a completely different way awesome yeah, I'm like, I just want to sit in that space. <laughs> you know, like, the space of gratitude is just so super yummy. And, you know, how much more of that can we have? And how much more of an invitation we can we have by energetically doing it? Because sometimes mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with our words. And other times asking the questions that bring that. Um, so I'm just going to say the word joy. But, um <laughs> It's one of your new favorite questions to ask people. And um, like how, ask the question what it is and then like how you've seen it change people's, like just even their demeanor as you're asking the question of them. So, wait, so I'm using the word joy? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah um, so what I'm trying to allude to is like your conversation when you were in Puerto Rico. Um, ah, yes. Ask, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, thank you for reminding me of that. Uh, in the last couple of days, a bunch of other questions have kind of come up in my world, but it's interesting to me. I've been asking people, uh, some people while I've been traveling, okay, what brings you joy? Mm -hmm. And I have been so surprised what, uh, by the reactions that I've been getting, the responses I've been getting, a lot of what people do not know what brings them joy. Or I'm the first person in their life who's asked them, what brings you joy? And it's kind of blown my mind because I'm constantly asking myself now what's been fun. And even before doing energy work, and I'll, even when I was in crippling pain, I was like, this isn't fun, but I recognize what would be fun, what did bring me, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, okay, this moment isn't fun. Um, and, but I know that, that it exists out there. So, um, and really asking what brings you joy that doesn't involve 
someone else. That was the other thing. So sometimes I would ask people that and they were like, other than helping other people or doing things for other people, I have no idea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then they would sit with us. Like, I'm really going to consider that um, because that's really not the life I'd like. I'd like a life in which I don't have to have, I don't have to rely on other people or doing things for other people to be happy. Uh, and so I was like, okay, cool. Um, some people that they, they come up with something, but you can see there being like this crunchiness there, like this, wow, where am I walking into right now? Like, what is this new space of, ha of that being a priority, of that being something of value to choose things that are joyful and not just that will make more money or that um, will, you know, help out my family or um, it's because that's what I've been told to do and for be it media, family, culture, friends, whatever, you know. Um, and so it's just a simple question. What brings you joy? And then see what shows up. And if you don't know yet, try some stuff out and see if it's joyful. And if not, try something different. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. So, that. yeah, it's been a fun one. Thank you for reminding me of that. Sure. So I do want to um, bring a little bit of your sass into this. And <laughs> You mean it hasn't already been brought in? <laughs> oh, well, it's like, uh, it's there, it's there, but let's just like acknowledge it and like bring it even more. So um, you, d you definitely show up in the world as an invitation um, by being all of who you are. And um, you've had some really amazing Zoom conversations lately that I think other people aren't willing to have. And so, you know, what are some of those creations and what inspires you to like show up in the world this way? Choice. <laughs> uh, it's fun for me. Mm -hmm. um, what some of them that maybe you're referring to is I love talking about sex. I love talking about kink. I love talking about pleasure and, uh, and communicating with the earth and nature. Um, and, and not necessarily in this whole political arena of like climate change or not climate change if it exists or not, but really just being like, hey, the earth is here and it's willing to contribute to you. And are you willing to hear it? Are you willing to acknowledge that, that any awareness you have about the earth and that possible communion you can have with it um, and have with your body and and also tapping into and talking about, because I, I love working with kids and I have this wonderful capacity with them, talking about that they're infinite beings and that they have sexualness and it's not a wrongness and it never was a wrongness, even though you might've been told that when you were a kid. Yeah. Um, and talking about that from a space of non-judgment of just, you know, hey, what if they just happen to be having little bodies right now, but they're infinite beings just like you who are this adult. Um, and how can you nurture their awareness and, and show them all these different possibilities of how it is to play and enjoy and, and be creative. Um, all of those different generative capacities that they might have that it starts really young, you know, by like two, three, it's already, people are already starting to shut off their awareness because they're getting these messages that, that enjoying being in their body is wrong. That, um, and this isn't about sexualness, this isn't about genitals, this is about creativity, this is about awareness and receiving and perceiving and all of these different things. But it's, it's so interwoven. It's so connected. And so I come, I'm willing to go into this space and talk about these things that are really uncomfortable for a lot of people, but that they would like to shift. And for those that are willing to shift that, I'm willing to have those conversations with them. Because um, I've been really fortunate that even though I've been sexually assaulted and I've been physically and emotionally and verbally abused in my past, that I still have this, I didn't let all of that shut down my joy of embodiment and, and my asking for more pleasure um, and, and more, more possibility with this, with this body and this world and with my capacities. And so, um, and children are so willing to move 
and to play and have joy. And only when, when they start buying the points of views of the adults around them, do you start seeing them start to judge their awareness and their bodies and their sexualness and their capacities and gifts. And so one of the things that I've been really enjoying um, that I was doing when I was working with children and families in the homes was having those conversations when I was talking about the speech and the feeding and the language and the behavior, also talking about sexualness and creativity and play and joy and all these different things in a way that you could see the adults even shifting too. Mm -hmm. um, and being willing to choose joy and then therefore their children were having more joyful lives. And isn't that what all of us want for the children of this world? Like more joy and happiness and less what? violence and yeah. yeah, all of that. Um, you know, just more expansion instead of contraction. Uh, yes, we'd love it for them to be all these other things, but let them choose what those other things look like. But if they could at least be happy mm -hmm. and be in touch with themselves and, and change the world in whatever way they want to change it, like awesome and so that's part of what what i'm what my target is with my zoominars um and my classes is really you know yeah get at the adults but really have it hopefully having it be like a trickle down effect where it really changes the lives of these children as well um because there are a future and i'm i'm really striving to create a completely different world in the future i think that it's required for, of all of us right now Absolutely. You're definitely creating it in your own space at the moment and everywhere that you go <laughs> because um, you really do. It, you know, you invite people to like have their awareness of what their joy is, their happiness is, their pleasure is, and, um, and to ask themselves whether they give themselves permission to go there and mm -hmm. to acknowledge themselves for the things that give them pleasure. Mm -hmm. um, and to allow themselves to like, let go of definition and <laughs> judgment. And mm -hmm. um, it's really awesome. A lot of people choose to be defined by the things that have happened in the past. And you have chosen differently. You've also um, invited in tools that have helped you to release those implants and so on with access bars and, and, and all the people in your life that help with that so you know it's it's just this really beautiful constant flow of energy back and forth of you know like uh almost like play plugging into that electrical current um you're you're really plugged into what is going to feed you and expand you and everything that's the target that's yeah i mean each day you should Use it, and and if there's a day in which it's a little bit more challenging, you just keep asking questions and be like, all right, you know, I've I've definitely given myself, t you know, a little timer. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna cry for this five minutes. Oh, okay, this is really hard. I seriously do this. I put a timer on my phone, and I'm like, I'm just gonna have this really dramatic, fun moment right now. Just have fun with this ridiculous that I'm in. And then the timer goes off and I'm like, okay, wiping the tears, wash the face, put the makeup back on. And then now what am I going to do this? Right. So you can indulge in those moments every once in a while and that's fine. And that you don't have to judge yourself for it. And then next. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you have so, so many Zoominars that you're scheduling and can you tell everybody where the greatest place is to find you so they can find out where you're having retreats and <laughs> seminars and you know um, all the different things that you have going on and will continue to expand going on um well my website empoweringlightlanguage.com is a great place to start and also i'm on facebook with empowering light language inc just my business facebook page okay and um, then you could also feel free to facebook friend, friend me hmm? yeah you started a youtube channel too right Yes, yes. i am uh, got some nice fun videos for y'all to watch. Lots of free videos on YouTube and they'll keep expanding and increasing as well. Um, and that's just the, the Empowering Light Language YouTube page. Mm -hmm. Great. All those are, are linked up through all those other pages. So whichever way you go into it, <laughs> you'll find me. Uh, and people can email me as well at empoweringlightlanguage at gmail.com. Awesome. Well, I'm really thankful that you came on. So my, my virgin interview experience <laughs> and, you know, it's really been my choice to have people on who live 
the life that you want to have more of mm -hmm. and um, that you embody that space of your business, like it oozes out your pores and like you, you walk it, you walk the talk and, and then um, come from that space. So thank you. And I can't wait for more people to, to know you, to work with you and to play with you and everything else. So yeah, me neither. Thanks for having me. Yeah.